Hello everyone, my name is S.A. Mafidan. I'll be taking us through the diabetic foot as a scenario for the NAC Oxy examination. I'll be using this outline, um, the preparation, which is the two minutes before the station, the history, depending on the task, or physical examination, investigation, counseling and will summarize diabetic foot is a fairly common condition and as a result is frequently encountered in clinical scenarios in the NAC examination outside the station you have two minutes and it's important to use this two minutes effectively read and understand the clinical scenario it's also recommended to take notes of the important details, such as the name of the, of the standardized patient, the age, the location, is it the clinic or the emergency room, because the management would differ in both cases. And if there's any specific concern that the patient has, it's important to note it as well because that is what you need to complain co complete when you're in this in the station uh, sometimes you're asked to take a history and address a concern or perform a physical examination and when the bell goes off you knock don't forget to take the sanitizer and then introduce yourself to develop a rapport if it's diabetic foot it's usually a complication of diabetes it's not a symptom so you probably will be told that this patient is already diabetic so it's coming with a concern now after asking the patient how they want to be addressed and cre creating the rapport, it's important to take a full history of the ulcer or the foot or the complaint or the concern following the OCD PQRST outline. Onset, setting, cost, duration, position, severity, aggravating, relieving, what they've done so far happen if it has happened in the past and any ulcers or treatments any ulcers anywhere else or treatments that they've done before once you've done that sc then screen for move on to screen to, for other complications of diabetes like stroke retinopathy nephropathy that's have they had a seizure loss of consciousness blurry vision, blood in the urine, recurrent infections, cramping sensation in the hand and the foot. Remember to complete your history following the other basic history tenets like the past medical, surgical history, allergies, medication and the social history. Ask about the mood and the interest of the patient because you want to screen for diabetes as well, for depression as well because sometimes it's a complication of diabetes. If the station requires you to perform a physical examination, this should be also follow the format of creating a rapport, telling the patient exactly what you're going to be doing and obtaining consent for it, sanitizing your hand, and exposing the area you want to examine which is usually the foot then you inspect following the you perform your examination following the IPPA but in this case you may not need to auscultate so you inspect for swellings erythemas atrophy scars deformities ask the patient to walk check the gait usually they have an attack gait um, check for 
ex when you find an ulcer, examine the ulcer, describe the site, the location, the shape, the borders, the edge, the floor. If there's any discharge present, classify that discharge, color, odor, consistency, and blood, and the amount. And also check the surrounding skin as well. Palpate for tenderness, temperature, capillary refill, the pulse. Then go ahead to do your light touch with the patient's eyes closed and check for glove and stocking pattern usually found in diabetic patients. Also the joint pens, joint position sense with the patient's eyes closed using the big toe. Check if the patient can identify where the toe is facing. This is also lost in patients with diabetes. Vibration sense as well using a turning fork. But if you do not have, you can say you would love to do this. And check the ankle reflex, ankle breaker reflex usually, and ankle reflex as well. Then you do a monofilament test with on the on the plantar surface of the foot and thank the patient. This diagram represents the various areas in which you want to check the light touch, checking the dermatones of the foot, as well as how to perform the monofilament test. Sometimes you ask differential diagnosis, but it's very uncommon. Um, usually, maybe traumatic ulcers, venous ulcers, arterial ulcers. And this will require ruling out with both the history and some investigations. Investigations usually not requ required because diabetic foot is a clinical diagnosis. Uh, but to rule out other etiologies, you may want to do a Doppler scan if it's a vascular etiology, a wound biopsy if it's an infective cause. But usually to check the extent of the disease, you may want to do an x-ray to rule out osteomyelitis, screen the patient to check for control of the blood sugar, check for renal involvement, and also cardiovascular risk, you assess it for the patient. The counseling is the major bulk. Usually if it's involved in a station, then you have to spend a lot of time here. Follow the SPIKES protocol, setting, perception, invitation, knowledge, expectation, and support. Setting is creating a setting that is conducive for the patient and for yourself. Uh, ask the patient what they know already about the diagnosis or what the condition or their concern. And find out if they need support or anyone around that can help them or they want to be in the room as you give them the news and then ask how much they want to know about the current concern or the diagnosis that they have provide knowledge based on the um, um, recorded or written um, information that's available on that condition and then find out the patient's expectations allow room for the patient to express grief and then prefer offer support and a plan for treatment so that is when you may give um, options for treatment explaining various options and the risk involved uh, the alternatives if they choose not to go ahead with treatment and if they do you uh, go want to go ahead with ablative treatment sometimes you may want to get the consent for that as well as a consent for prosthesis explaining what both means both the amputation the process and the use of process prosthesis usually for patients that refuse treatment is a concern that is commonly asked and they want to find out how you can address this uh, you go following the spikes as well and then find out if the patient has considered other alternatives before refusing and then educate the patient on on the if on the com on the complications that can arise from refusing treatment and then go ahead to ask them if the, the using that complication as sepsis, cardiovascular arrest, 
you ask them if they have an advanced directive if they don't educate them on what an advanced directive is find out if they have a substitute decision maker if they don't educate them about what a substitute decision maker is and then give them a plan or suggest a plan to them and seek their decision after that you require to thank the patient for the audience and let the patient know that you are around in case they have any questions or any member of your team is around in case they have question, any questions they can always ask and they don't always have to make a decision sometimes patients don't make a decision they will tell you they want to think about it allow that room for them to think about it and tell them you are available anytime that you need them they need you to come clarify any questions they may have yeah this is just a slide on the common scenarios they usually will not give you a history and physical examination for diabetic food is either an examination and post their counter questions after they observe your technique or they give you a history and address a concern which is usually a refusal of treatment or an unsatisfied um, patient then you fall you usually do not have they just want to see how you handle that there's usually no post encounter questions for this in summary know that diabetic foot is a complication of diabetes so you're not expected to be asking when they were diagnosed diabetes history of polyuria and all of that go straight to the complaint and ask about it however if they expressly state that the patient is not diabetic but coming with an ulcer then you want to ask if they have any symptoms suggesting diabetes um so as a result, they want to see how you can show empathy, inform the patients of possible sequelae that can occur, and address their concern at the same time. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much.